Hey groups, uh, excited to be with you guys again today. Uh, before we get into groups content, I wanna give you a bit of a recap on what the message was about this weekend and the words that Pastor Eric had to say. We are in a series right now on Sticks and Stones, going through the book of James and specifically uh, chapter three of James. And the verse that we focus on today is James three, verse four, or this weekend we focus on James three, verse four, or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants it to go. Um, and throughout the teaching this weekend, Eric explained how big of a deal such a small rudder is. Thinking about the Titanic, um, they were, it, and, and how our words are timely, right? How they matter and using those things at the right time. With the story of the Titanic, I never knew that it was simply because they couldn't steer the ship quick enough because the the person, the captain who was trying to get across the ocean was only thinking about speed. And he wasn't thinking about slowing down and moving through the icebergs uh, periodically. Now, he just wanted to get across. Um, and what they found in the Titanic is there's actually binoculars that were locked in in the cabinet that they were supposed to be using. And if they used those tools, they would have been able to see what was coming in front of them. But the captain only wanted to get there quick. He didn't worry about those special tools that he should be using. Even thinking about the uh, South Korea boat that they were on um, and what happened years later that that boat capsized and hundreds of people were killed because that rudder was used too quickly. Um, rudders are very powerful tools. They're tiny and yet they can steer the whole ship like we hear in James. Um, but in the same way, our tongues have a very similar power. Right, They're small, but yet if they're used in an untimely way, um, they can lead to destruction, right? And they can lead to, to hurt and pain. Um, but if they're used in the correct way, they can bring healing and life to people. Um, so that is, that is where we're going to continue to talk about. And I'm excited for the conversations you have today because I think this is, this is a message we all need to hear. What does it mean to use our words and use our surroundings in the correct time? So, um, kids, if you are in the room, um, there's going to be some kids' question on the bottom of the sheets. Uh, group leaders, go ahead and run through those on your own. And then when you're done with that, we will jump right into um, the normal questions. All right, question number one. Uh, I want you to read again from James chapter three, verse four again, and then uh, ask yourself this question. When has there been a time in your life when you thought something wasn't an issue, but it actually turned out to be a big deal? Question number two. Remember back to the story of the Titanic, that there were those binoculars and special tools that were locked in that cabinet that he should have been using. Um, what tools may stay locked in your cabinet that you should be using? Question number three. When has there been a time in your life when you didn't feel like you knew what to say? Maybe it is a friend who experienced loss or after someone has been giving disappointing news. What did you do in those moments? Question number four. I want you to start by reading Proverbs 29, verse 20, and then ask yourself this question. Having timely words means slowing down sometimes and thinking before you speak. What specific times in the last few weeks have you spoken with haste? Question number five. Speaking of this haste, when you speak in haste, what effects do your words have? 
Specifically, do they create disruption or peace? What happens in this? Number six, read Proverbs 12, verse 18. This verse uh, pretty clearly um, describes the power that our words can have. And so often we can move quickly with our words and not even think about the words that are coming out of our mouth. Um, Our words yet, even in those moments, can either bring healing or they can cut like a knife. And here's the question in this. Uh, Describe a time where words have brought healing to you. And then another question in this, who do you need to use words of healing with this week? Maybe there's been somebody that you haven't been using the right words with. Who do you need to be, bring words of healing with this week? Um, and why did you choose that specific person? All right, number seven, as we wrap up, I want you to first talk about the challenge from last week, the challenge of walking Xander's, our horse, uh, 10 times around a track. How did that go for you? And the second part to number seven is the challenge for this coming week. Uh, Pray before you speak. Think about the moments in your day that carry weight. Some of the, some of the heavier events that are going on in your life. The moments that you're, these moments that your words actually mean something to people, that they're going to carry weight in their lives. Take a step back and pray and allow God to speak some words through you after you've given those, given those moments some time. Um, I'm so excited for these, this series. I'm so excited for what Groups is going to be able to do with this content and in these questions. And I hope you're able to have some good dialogue together. If you guys have some time, um, the digging deeper section uh, this week is pretty interesting. It's out of Matthew 17, talking about uh, the disciples when they were trying to actually heal people. And they were really frustrated because they weren't able to do it like Jesus has done it. So if you got time, I'm not going to spoil it all. Check out those Digging Deeper sections at the bottom of the next page. Um, And otherwise, we will see you guys next week.